All right. Hello, class, and welcome to our first video lesson. I'm really uh, hoping that these videos will be useful for you, that you can watch them at home and review them and sort of do them at your own pace. So let's see how this goes. Now, our first lesson here is going to be 4.1, work done by a constant force. Now, work you've seen before. This is mostly a uh, review from grade 11, this whole lesson. Um, so you might remember that work is the energy, the energy that a force gives to an object by moving it. And work is very closely related to kinetic energy, which you might remember as well. We have an equation for work. Work is equal to the force times the displacement times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between force and displacement. Now this cosine theta, it's there because only the force in the direction of displacement actually does work. So we'll say here, work is only done by the component of force in the direction of motion. Okay. Now, our units for work are joules, J. I'll put the spelling here, joules, like this. And we've got one joule is equal to one newton meter, which is equal to one kilogram meter squared per second squared. Okay, but generally we just, we call it a joule. Um, those, are, those are the other things that it's equal to though. Alright, down here we have a picture of somebody shoveling snow and you can see that they're doing a force down on an angle, but the horizontal component of that, of that force, F cosine theta, is the only component that's actually doing any work here because the snow is only being pushed in this horizontal direction. So we'll do a couple problems that illustrate that. This first problem is a hockey player, and the hockey player is sliding a puck along, um, applying a force of 85 newtons over a displacement of 0 0.2 meters. We can use our equation, W equals F delta D cosine theta, and we can just plug in our numbers here. We've got 85 newtons times 0 0.2 zero meters, cosine, and now here's maybe a, a question. What's the angle? Cosine theta, but what's, what's the angle of theta? Well, the hockey stick is moving in exactly the same direction here as the puck, so the angle between them is zero degrees. And this is maybe a special case because the cosine of theta, the cosine of zero degrees is just one. So when I uh, do that math there, I get the work equal to 17 joules. And really for this problem, since there was uh, zero degrees between them, I could have used the simplified equation F delta D and ignored theta entirely. But that's just this one special case where the force is in the same direction as displacement. Now we've got a second problem here. This is a more normal sort of work problem because we have an angle. So a student pushes a lawnmower forward with a constant force of 48 newtons over a distance of eight and a half meters and there's an angle here of 32 degrees. So again, we can just plug in our numbers, F delta D cosine theta, and our numbers here are 48 newtons times 8.5 meters cosine, and our angle was 32 degrees. You just put that in your calculator, and you get a value of 3.1 times 10 to the 2 joules. Good. And this very last problem is about a student carrying books with a weight of 22 newtons, a distance of 3.8 meters across a room. Now notice you have to apply this vertical force of 22 newtons to hold the books up, to keep them from falling. Now the problem is that that is at an angle perpendicular to the direction of movement. 
So it doesn't matter how much force you're applying upwards, our angle here, theta, is equal to 90 degrees. And in our equation, we use cosine theta. Well, cosine of 90 degrees is just equal to zero. So it doesn't matter how much force we're doing here, we're not actually doing any work, even though it seems like work to carry these books across the room. There's no physical work being done. So we can say here, the work is equal to zero joules. And I don't even need to put it into my equation. I know that this is perpendicular. There's no work being done. All right, if you turn to the next page here, we're going to look at a few more interesting cases. We've got negative and zero work. We just did one zero work problem, but we're going to do another one as well. So first off, negative work. Here we have an ice skater um, skating, and she's stopping herself over a distance of 1.2 meters with a force of 90, 95 newtons. Now you'll see that um, the force that she's receiving from the ice is at this angle of 140 degrees. That's larger than 90 degrees. Over on the picture here, I'm drawing, this is 90 degrees. And you can see that 140 degrees, it's, it's past that. And the cool thing is, when we take the cosine of an angle larger than 90 degrees, it becomes negative. Let's, uh, let's plug it in. We'll use our equation, W equals F delta D cosine theta. Nothing tricky, it's exactly the same equation. And we'll plug in the numbers, 95 newtons. Delta D is 1.2 meters. Cosine of 140 degrees. And this gives us a value of negative 87 joules. So we were doing negative work here. And that makes sense because we're saying that she's stopping. She was moving to the right. She was moving this way. And she's applying a force in the opposite direction. This is her force. So when you're applying a force to slow yourself, you're removing kinetic energy. You're doing negative work. And that's the number that we got here. You see, we didn't even have to do anything different with the equation. It came right out of the fact that our angle was larger than 90 degrees. Our angle was partially opposite the direction of our motion. Good. And we'll try one more here. A student twirls a rubber stopper on a string in a horizontal circle around her head. Determine the work done on the stopper by the string during one revolution. So take a look at the picture to the right here. We've got our rubber stopper, and at this point it's moving upwards. And the force is being applied inwards. We have 90 degrees here. Up is the direction of motion. Left is the direction of the force. They're perpendicular, which means that there's not going to be any work done. So we can straight away say our work is equal to zero joules. And if we want to explain that, we can say because the force and our direction of movement are always perpendicular. This is our centripetal force. We've, we've studied this in, in the first unit. So it's perpendicular w at the starting point. It's going to be perpendicular here. It's going to be perpendicular down here. It doesn't matter where it is. The force is always going to be perpendicular to our motion. So since they're perpendicular, we're not doing any work. Now there's one other interesting thing here, which is that in one full revolution, even if we were somehow doing work at each individual moment, well, if I'm starting here, and I go all the way around and end at that same point, then my displacement is going to be equal to zero. I started and ended at the same point. So even if somehow I was doing work during that uh, revolution, when I go one full time around, my displacement is zero, so it still would mean that I would have done zero work, zero joules of work it's sort of irrelevant because um, we're not doing any work at any point during that, uh, that process. Okay, we'll look at one last example here. This is adding forces together to do work. So now instead of one force, we have two forces. Actually, we have four. You'll see that we have normal force and gravity on this picture, but our normal force here and our gravity, they're both perpendicular to the motion, so they're not doing any work at all. Okay. In this problem, it says a long-distance hiker is pulling a sled across a snowy field. 
the hiker exerts a constant force of 135 newtons on the sled at a 48 degree angle to the sled's displacement. At the same time, a constant 67 newtons frictional force on the sled from the snow opposes the motion. Calculate the work done by the hiker, the work done by friction, and the total work done on the sled when the hiker pulls the sled 345 meters over the snow. Okay, we've got three things to calculate. We've got the hiker. We'll start with the hiker. And even though there's all these pieces, it doesn't matter. It's still the exact same equation, which is quite simple. F delta D cosine theta. And I'm going to use the work WH for the hiker. Okay, the hiker had a force of 135 newtons and a displacement here of 345 meters, cosine 48 degrees. That was the angle that the, the hiker is pulling it at. And that gives me a work done by the hiker of 3.116 times 10 to the 4 joules. Good. So now I'll do friction. So the work done by friction is equal to, again, F delta D cosine theta. Now in this case, and in all cases, friction is always going to be exactly opposite the direction of motion. Okay, cool. So that means that, um, that our friction here is at an angle of 180 degrees, and it's doing a force of 67 newtons. Our displacement here is again 345 meters, cosine 180 degrees. And all that will do is it'll multiply everything by negative 1, 180 degrees. Okay, when I put those all together, I get a result of negative 2.312 times 10 to the 4 joules. And now if I want to do my total, all I need to do is add up the two forces. The total force is equal to the hiker, sorry, the add up the work. The total work is um, equal to the hiker plus friction. We get 3.116 plus, oops, I guess it's minus here because we have a negative uh, work, minus 2.312 times 10 to the 4 joules. And that gives us a value of 8.04 times 10 to the 3 joules. Or you could call that 8.04 kilojoules. Great! That's our whole lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.